Hey, what's up? We're in the next part. I'm busy talking over here about witches and their chandeliers and uh, the fast that I'm entering into. Usually my fasts are a month long at a minimum, you know, so I tend to look at the date like today's the 22nd of October. I will therefore stop fasting on the 22nd of November. Uh, so I will just keep looking at the date that way. And on that, the day after the 22nd, so basically the 23rd will be when I go back to eating regularly again. It's going to be hard initially, but the reason why I also stopped fasting, especially considering I wanted to go back to exercise, was because I there was a time when I was trying to go back to exercise during a time when I was fasting, and I was so weak. I was so weak in my workouts. I was struggling to regain the energy. The start, like I had already lost so much stamina. Now there's like all the speech lagging. What in the world? I'd already lost so much stamina uh, because of just being sedentary period but then trying to go back and regain your energy at the height that it was it was given that you know what you can do given that you know what height you can get what height of fitness you can get to because of having gotten there in the past um pushing yourself is hard i wasn't the first time train trainer i wasn't training my body for the first time and so i knew what i could do and it was very frustrating that i couldn't push myself to certain places and I, and I understood that it was a combination of being unfit now and also hungry I was weak and I was actually shaking you know like a good like how 20 minutes after one set and for me a set is a song after one set I would be so like feeling like I'm fainting wanting to stop holding onto a table on some <sighs> what's going on and then looking at my hands and realizing that they're shaking and I realized that it's because I have no food in my body. So when then I stopped my fast and I put food in my body and then only a couple of hours later working out, I realized there was a massive difference in my stamina. So it was not because it was not entirely because I was unfit. So that's when I was like, hey, I'm not going to fast anymore because it's going to mess with my fitness. But the, the Bible says physical training is of some value. But you must build up your spirit more than anything. And I need to build my spirit. And without fasting, I can't do that. I also need to war. Oh, Satan. Lama Dimoni. That everybody keeps sending me. I gotta, like, bust a cap in the knee or some of them. I gotta cut them out. I feel like they've been lodging. Like, they, they, you know, like, po like product buildup in your hair. After leaving a protective style in for three months. And thinking that you're gonna have an easy time detangling after that. These demons currently have been lodging around, getting sent to me by some pretty prolific witches, these devil worshippers, and they're like product buildup. And it's about time I take down this protective style. And it is about time I smash that protective style with apple cider vinegar. It is about time I sit down and detangle for hours. Even though it would have only taken me 20 minutes per, you know, section. If at all I had not allowed my, my hair to mat like that, which by the way is something I really need to do this time around as well. Like I'm not going to let my hair mat again like the way that it was recently because I love my hair and how it's growing and I can't keep messing with it like that. So now one month is too long. Uh, I'm going to make sure that I bring down my protective style faster than before. So we don't deal with issues because look at how beautifully and how darling this hair is growing. But, but with that analogy indeed, truthfully so. One minute. Ooh, yeah, okay, I was letting my cat out. Mm, uh, the product buildup slash demon buildup in my ecosystem is lofty. I've been feeling it. I've been recalcitrant, rebellious, and apprehensive. Uh, uh, till I've been disillusioned, okay, against God because of my sorrow and the, the lack of answered prayer. What I imagine is that. And I've not been fasting, but now I feel like I've been given a motivation to fast over and above just the spiritual benefits of it and it's the fact that i want to get thin i want to lose weight i want to lose weight and so it's a combination of intermittent, f intermittent fasting for the purpose of losing weight and of busting a cap in the knees of some demons but i need to make sure that i've got energy during exercise because i did make an observation that when i had like if i have not eaten because i would work out without eating i would work out just in that state in that fasted state i used to do that in the beginning stages of my sorrow work out with no food in my stomach even take like a grand puff or a headache and have no food i have coffee in my body and i would exercise for hours and i wouldn't feel necessarily weak but during that season i had gotten my body used to that and i don't want to ever get back to that season where i'm just training my body without exercise that's the equivalent of some eating disorder frankly uh some yeah still yeah and also my muscle development during that time was lackluster i worked out for years and i was going nowhere in terms of toning 
and I realized it was because of a lack of nutrition. But I was not hung, I was not barely eating during that season out of choice. Just let's put that out there. It was kind of imposed on me because I barely had any food anyway. Yeah, that's why I lost weight. I, I stopped making money. I had like, I, it, my life has sucked. Let's just put that out there. I never imagined in my life I would ever have a food insecurity as a problem. But my family put me in a position to be one of those people who there was a time in my life when I did not know where my next meal is coming from. I, I can't believe that that's even my story. But it is. All right, uh, moving on. So uh, ever since really concentrating and focusing on my development fit in terms of fitness i have studied what it takes to build muscle what it takes to get the shape you want to truly lose weight to really give yourself a boost in terms of your body period to a point even of growing your hair like my hair is currently growing you guys to a point of making your hair look like that mm. uh i started to concentrate like the food i eat is a bolster for everything inside me my whole body is healthy including my hair my skin well that has not appeared to respond appropriately to my interventions of reducing inflammation but now it's clearing because we've got some other things that are happening for the skin my the speech lag i can't deal with the speech lag but it's cool anyway whatever you are uh, so because i noticed that i was losing muscle not muscle mass sorry stamina and I was shaking off the exercising during my fasts. I decided not to fast, but now I'm back to fasting. But I gotta make sure I have energy for my 8.30 workout. So this is now my plan. My fast is a 6 to 6. Uh, with, with my fast, I usually eat only once a day. That would be dinner. Uh, as well, so I would break my fast at whatever time I have dinner. But I would be allowed to eat essentially from 6 p.m. All right, so I've made a decision that I were, I'm going to basically stock my body up from 6 p.m. Fruit, a, a few, maybe like four or five portions. Not four or five, goodness, that's quite a bit. Let's say four, three, three and a half portions of fruit, including banana, because that's that's really it. It's high in energy. All right, when I was back in the day when I wanted to to get fit, but it didn't work out because I was lazy and the World Cup happened. Uh, I had seen a dietitian that told me that if i want to work out first thing in the morning like early before you go to work like at 5 a.m be at the gym or whatever if you don't have an appetite to eat yet because it hasn't it hasn't been very long since you had dinner have two bananas and you're good to go so i remember what the dietitian told me that two bananas will be enough to keep you going if you have an early morning workout uh because you haven't expanded energy yet you've just come out of sleeping but it is not wise uh, i guess to have like a whole full day where you're thriving and you're exhausted and you're pushing paper at work and then you go in the gym on just two bananas you'll faint um type thing so given that i will have fasted i will have been fasting the whole day i've made a decision that i will have a banana and maybe three other fruit uh like i don't know an apple a peach some gooseberries did i say that i probably just say that i wanted to say blueberries all right i will have that about two hours before exercising two hours all right um and see how that energy boost happens during the day i can have liquids so i have my coffee and i also have my what do you call this thing that drink that shot of mine uh that that i will have and i will have it i will use that for energy during the day but then at 6 p.m just as the clock strikes six i will have a banana i will have three other fruits and i will let those hang out in my body chill do what they need to do for two hours two and a half hours and then at 8 30 i will work out and hopefully it'll be enough because at the end of the day it's pointless to call it fasting uh, if at all i haven't actually cut down food so i have to take out some meal out of this whole thing and the meal that i will be taking out is my oatmeal the muesli uh, I, I, however i will still be having all of my portions of fruit and i will also be having all of my my dinner after after uh, exercise i will then of course have dinner so we'll see how that goes i hope that i, will, I won't be weak like feel uh, or whatever i hope i won't be feeling funny but that's what i'm gonna do and hopefully it's going to help me you know shed some 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 weight hopefully this month from the 22nd of october to the 22nd of november it's gonna get me looking nice and thin and then when we get to breaking the fast i'll go back to eating what it is that i was eating but you know i'll be careful to monitor if at all i'm regaining the weight back because remember 
on the current diet that I am on with the exercise I am losing weight but ever so gradually I'm losing it slowly at a pace I don't appreciate so if I fast track my weight loss and then go back to eating exactly the same way that I'm eating I should be able to maintain my weight instead of gain it because I am currently losing weight just not as fast if you know what I mean yeah so my body should be okay there's a certain size I want to be and you will know that size when you see it and it, it has to come faster now because frankly I'm tired of looking at myself shrinking at this at, at this pace of a snail it's bad enough everything else in my life is moving so slowly like my YouTube channel is going nowhere my my Facebook page is going nowhere I've been shadow banned everywhere allow me therefore then where it is that i can have 100 percent control over my progress control it like i proper want to lose weight faster i am sick and tired of being plateau and that whole weight loss taking care of my body eating well and also you know employing interventions on my face for crying out loud mm, is in order to maintain my youthful splendor my glory my beauty my gorgeous mane of hair all that jazz because i cannot afford to fall apart why because why should i fall apart when it is rather the prerogative of god to cause my enemies to fall apart a table is being prepared for me in the presence of my enemies people who are doing this to me standing back watching a woman lose everything i can't now also lose my figure i can't now also lose my hair i can't now also lose my skin and I almost lost my skin thanks to living in this hard knock uh, unventilated shack my paws were yawning making me look kind of strange something I don't quite understand nor appreciate when I look at it in the mirror and I was crying about my paws for a couple of months until I went online and studied 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 and found out that I need to get in touch with vitamin C and retinol and the results are frankly like the work of science fiction I can't believe it, my post closed because there are so many people on the internet talking about how it is that you can't reduce the size of your pores nothing can do that I beg to differ my pores have shrunk back down to the way that they look when I was a, just a teenager just a teenager uh, because of retinol and vitamin C and now I've got a doctor I told you guys that story the other day go check out my videos of old if you're intrigued by such content as that where I was talking about how it is that this cough this flu that I've been on caused my mother to make me go to the doctor following which uh, the doctor instead of giving me a GP consult gave me a dermatologist a dermatological consult he was a general practitioner that gave me the counsel of a, of a dermatologist and ended up prescribing tretinoin to me so over and above this firehouse yeah retinol and vitamin c i'm about to put down the retinol as soon as i can afford to buy that tretinoin gel and replace it with with, with tretinoin and everybody knows that tretinoin is the gold standard when it comes to anti-aging and it's the thing that gives you glass skin and it sucks in your pores if retinol did this for me then tretinoin should be doing a much better job even than retinol i've got the prescription i just do not have yet the actual physical product because my mom told me you'll bite uh, with that little 500 rands that i give you every month <laughs> the prescription was 500 bucks i was like can you be more miserly i won't buy that tretinoin at the end of the month because if i buy it i won't be able to get everything else that i need and there are other things i need so i'm going to have to basically save to get tretinoin in two or three months where i will literally be putting aside 100 rand or 150 rand every month so that eventually maybe by december that that's how i live i'll be able to get my prescription yet tretinoin from the uh discam by then by the time i go on tretinoin my acne should have faded my acne has faded that doctor prescribed it for acne but i'm looking for, at it for anti-aging by the time i get on tretinoin i will have this this here will have faded my hyperpigmentation I know that that's a thing why because that silly cream I thought it was silly I, I had underestimated it but please give credit where it's due give credit where it's due go look at my content from three four five days ago and see how much worse my skin was my hyperpigmentation is fading really fast the the product is 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 so good that it slays many other products in the market salicylic acid has never done this for me neither has what else claims to be uh, well i mean there's like some product at what do you call this uh, some scar uh, acne scar cream oxy scar cream from discam 
that has glycolic acid in it i don't know how much percentage of it and it did not fade my my, my dark spots this fast it faded them but not like this not like this i will <laughs> once this thing has done the miraculous work that it's doing on my face only once it's finished doing it i will tell you what that product is because you will be shocked out of your minds it is one of those el cheapos that you buy on like i can't really call it the black market it's like some chinatown thing i made sure it has no hydroquinone in it or mercury all of these like banned substances that can make you get ochronosis or whatever because you know i'm that girl that studied i did read the ingredients list and it doesn't have anything destructive right uh it is legal therefore in the country to be sold all that jazz because certain things hydroquinone is illegal in south africa uh, I, I don't even know if you can get it via prescription but it's definitely illegal anyway whatever yeah no it doesn't have any such thing the in it so how how good it is for how cheap it is and how entry level low market it is how you will never find this at this game and you will never find a celebrity endorsing this is is shocking frankly for how well it's working on my face i am currently peeling around here my lips they're dry like oh very dry i've had to add an extra layer of moisture on my face because of how this thing worked so quickly because it is like slothing away at the surface like skin to re uh, release or uh, reveal new skin underneath so my face over the past three days has been kind of tight but it's getting looser and looser because the, the more i wash it the more the dead skin falls off and the more revealed what, what is revealed underneath is pretty much all this i mean guys like look at this like my my hyperpigmentation was so bad that when i'm working when i was working out my exercise videos upon looking at myself from a distance in my exercise videos i could see like a gray patch here from all the acne that was here that died and now there's just this like these dark spots but from from a distance i just looked gray in this area gray just gray from in one of my fitness and look at that very area that looked just gray around here around here it's basically faded it's gone now it's gone so if i can see the difference from a distance and up close in just a few days on a person that usually struggles to see differences on her own body own face it's quite good but i'll tell you what it is <laughs> when i'm completely faded so you can believe <laughs> because it's cheap it's like 65 rands and it has done miracles it has cleared both acne and it's also clear removing my hyperpigmentation i am also taking blemmy metics yako disc cam the combination is inward and outwardly and it's clearing my acne so i did not need help to clear acne from a dermatologist it appears but i certainly do need help with anti-aging to solidify my sorrow um with, with a product and it's, since i'm living in this hot heavy hard knock environment that is literally making war with my pores trying to open them again because it's always so hot and so they always want to just yawn um the tretinoin should go a long way already vitamin c and retinol is doing a, a big job but once i go on the tretinoin i'm going to ditch the retinol and i'm going to replace it with the tretinoin but i will stick with the vitamin c in the mornings and that should uh, like maintain me even further maybe even end up giving me gloss skin that's what's good yeah so i mean praise god the lord has given me countering forces factors newton's law of motion says that an object in motion will stay in motion unless acted on by another force my yo my paws were starting to yawn very soon my face would have started to sag i would have started to see maybe visible fine lines and wrinkles and all that jazz and i intervened like real quick and here in furious and i acted on that force with another force i resisted it but now i'm about to resist it with an even stronger resistor which is the gold standard with an on anti-aging because where am i going exactly nowhere so i gotta also physically outwardly look like a person that's not moving am i not me i gotta turn back the hands of time like r kelly proper i gotta make sure that all the signs of nastiness on my face all of this hyperpigmentation anything at all that could mess with the thickness of my hair the growth of my hair anything that is trying to hint to a person that i'm old having nothing to do with like nothing nothing to show uh for it that's gotta fly out the window we don't want no cellulite we don't want no fat we don't want no bodolange big boobs like that properly are uh, just there because i'm so fat and not so much because i want to be like pamela anderson ah, Anna. i'm not interested i don't have children i have not given anybody a baby i am not married i cannot therefore look like i've seen life do you understand i can't i can't look like i've seen life given that i actually haven't 
other than the life of demons. People have just sent me rulers, principalities, spiritual wickedness and high places, authorities. And frankly, they're not going to take away my skin. They're not going to take away the health of my body. They're not going to take away my slender frame. They're not going to take away my energy levels. They're not going to take away my teeth. No, guys, it's not going to happen. I'm not, I refuse to age. Do you understand? Until I have something to show for it. I already spoke about that. I absolutely refuse to age at the speed of lightning until I have got something to show for it. Give me a child, then I'll let myself get a gray hair. Give me a child, then maybe I'll let my boobs, I'll, I'll, I'll go buy a bigger bra size. But right now, I'm going to lose weight until all my bras. I am not going to let this Kotwa Izan keep coming, keep bashing into me like a bull looking at a red cloth, hoping to devour the living daylights out of me. I will fight you. I'm going back to fasting so to, so as to lose weight quickly alongside slay more demons than what I already am incurred under. We're not doing this. All of these attacks, yes, like it guys, like the past uh, two weeks, the, the two weeks where I've been sedentary, chilling, trying to recover from an illness, the nightmares, you know, opportunism, capitalism, you know, trying to squeeze yourself into an ecosystem that does not make sense. Hey, Ebatung, I've learned lessons. And I know from those lessons that I have learned that I'm not about to go and accommodate anything that does not make sense for me. I gotta maintain my mindset like what it was back before I lost everything. Now, there was a time when I was starting to fall apart, but then God Almighty rescued me from a wicked decision that I was about to make with a bad man. But the mindset I used to have back then, there were certain kinds of guys that when I looked at them, I knew that's not for me. Whatever it is that was a lifestyle choice, I knew upon looking at it that that's not for me. There were certain kinds of homes I would not live in because that's not for me. There were certain kinds of clothes I wouldn't wear because that's not for me. There were certain kinds of people I wouldn't hang out with because that's not for me. Why? Because I had made out of myself a certain kind of person that should not be frequenting certain places and being with certain people. And people expect that because I'm suffering, I'm in squalor and I'm persecuted. I now got to take some substandard random coming into my ecosystem because it sees what value there is in me but underestimated and unappreciated just because my family does not care about my future doesn't mean i don't and just because my friends could not care less to keep me in their lives doesn't mean that nobody ever will think that way about me in inevitably into the future indefinitely into the future so i gotta maintain a certain mindset the bible says you must demolish arguments and every lofty pretension that exalts itself above the most high and hold into captivity every thought to the obedience of jesus christ and that's what i'm gonna do there is this woman on youtube whose channel i found some years ago maybe a year and a half year and a half two years ago during the time when i was studying hair okay because there was a time when my hair it, it had plateaued it was just so slow it was stagnant it wasn't going anywhere and i wanted to find out how in the world to get my hair to where it used to be and i so therefore studied a lot of hair content creators online for c natural hair ladies and i found this one particular lady a black american lady and her hair was like chilling proper hair okay it was chilling on her waist after it was blow dried out you know it was stretched out but it wasn't silk pressed out so it wasn't as long as it could be if she had stretched it out further it might have even gotten just underneath her buttock but it was like chilling hair and it had the texture of hair that my hair is when it's blown out right when, when my I've, I've had 4c hair long ago before and i know what my hair looks like when it's blown out i haven't blown it out ever since entering into persecution because i lost it and it kept breaking i didn't know how to take care of it so there came a time when i taught myself how to take care of my hair by checking out a whole bunch of youtube content creators right so i do know what my hair looks like when it's blown out and this lady had blown her hair her hair was blown out she was giving hair care tips and her hair was chilling on her waist here and it was big it was bushy and that woman when i looked at her hair my heart was sinking on some goodness i'll never get there how in the world does anybody grow so much hair as a black woman how does it even happen maybe it's because she's in america and the climate there is different and so it's helping their hair grow i'm in south africa we all know how black girls up in this monster their hair don't grow so it is what it is but like it would be nice if i could get there but it's highly unlikely and the lord said to me how do you think that you're not going to get to that hair when your texture looks exactly like that woman's? It's just that you've never seen that length. You've never seen that length. And I was like, um, okay, God, that's all I said. And ever since watching that woman's channel and basically seeing that beautiful hair that she was talking about, God has brought her as a vision to the forefront of my mind so many times to show me that my hair is going to get there. That my hair is going to get to a point where after blowing it out, it is chilling on my waist. And if I were to 
stretch it out even further it might even be underneath my butt how and that, that, that that's that one that, that that's just one woman one woman yeah that i saw there's also another girl now her name i definitely remember uh because she's quite big on youtube kelsey eugenia yeah yeah that's chilling on her like it's like bl after blowing her hair out it's chilling maybe like on her shoulder there but then when she stretches it out it also goes to like perhaps her buttock or something right it's really ridiculously big right now and long uh the lord has shown me my hair looking like that of eugenia's and that other lady whose content i was watching and her hair i was looking at it on some while how i wish i had hair like that i also have we have the same texture of hair upon it being blown out and god has basically promised me that my hair is gonna get there it's gonna get there meaning that the lord has a future for me he said to uh, is it jeremiah it is right that i know the plans that i have for you plans to prosper you and not to harm you to give you a hope and a future he told jeremiah that before it, 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 right i need in your mother's womb i called you before you were born i called you i i foreordained you i predestinated you for a job and you're gonna go on right ahead and do it that even though you're gonna have a whole bunch of people that are stubborn coming up against you i'm gonna make you strong and you are going to do abc that future that has been foreordained and foreplanned god knows it full well it's also written in psalm 139 right or is it 135 it's 139 uh fearfully and wonderfully made that passage is my favorite psalm in the bible it, it is written that before any of the days of our lives come to pass the lord knows them full well he knits us together in our mother's wombs there is not a single day that progresses that god does not know so the fact that god keeps giving me visions of where i'm going in certain facets of my body of my life of what i'm doing evidences that he has planned a future for me he has shown me my hair getting to this way the, like my length my getting my he has shown me my uh body there is this woman that i fo i follow currently on youtube forgot her name but i know i follow her uh i think it's a latina lady latina lady also living in the u.s she does calisthenics calisthenics right that's what it's called Cal like when you use your own body weight to build your body yeah she she's gotten really good at calisthenics she used to be kind of chubby like i was low-key chubby just after getting out of my five-year relationship um and she made a decision that she's going to take care of her weight but i mean i was never her chubby was loftier even than the chubby that i was she was she was okay i was never i can't call myself chubby i can't say that i was chubby but i was bigger than what i'm used to because i've always been a skinny girl do you understand but that girl was was big she had big girl like if you see her on the street you say the chubby girl type thing and she started from being chubby to being a trainer in calisthenics a trainer in and of herself she's a trainer she teaches people she takes classes she has gotten that strong there was a time when i never used to believe that i could ever build any ad admirable strength in my body because of my natural body shape that girl also had a bit of a pudgy thing going like soft muscles uh naturally you don't have the you know there are people who will tell you you should probably join the gym because if you lifted weights if you did abc you would look really good because you can tell that from their natural um physiology from their genetics they they could look really good if they actually took it to the gym but then there are others who just look pudgy out during these streets there's nothing to write home about genetically they have not been very gifted um and you underestimate what in the world they could do that girl was like that and that's how i am as well and naturally i leave a lot to be desired in terms of my tone my body does not naturally tone very fast it takes me forever and a day i am not very strong even my arms like i'm struggling right now i want to get my arms to a point where i'm, I'm they, they're toned but i don't work my arms out when i exercise by the way because i'm always standing i'm restricted i'm limited but i have bought weights and i'm lazy to use them uh stuff like that but i do want to get to a point where i've toned my arms uh I've, I've basically lean muscle okay i've toned my arms i have really toned my legs my calves all that jazz to a point where i could feasibly look like somebody that is would be in a position to train fitness instead of being the trainee and this woman that does calisthenics from the u.s was like me kind of flabby flabby nothing to write home about uh not the kind of person that a gym buff would motivate to go to the gym because she looks like she could be really toned if she started working out uh but then she decided one day that she's going to discipline herself and start and not today she's a trainer and the lord has given me a promise personally that if i push my fitness i'm gonna get to a point where i'm like that woman and in particular the one that does calisthenics because i have a thing about my own body weight instead of using weights i am 
lazy for weights i bought a, a 10 kilogram kettlebell and i still haven't used it i'm lazy for weights and so the day is gonna arrive when i have toned my body using my own body weight just like with calisthenics i don't even know what in the world that's gonna look like but i have seen my legs get really strong because i use them a lot in, in in dancing right i've seen how strong i get in just a short space of time and so if i can apply the same effort on my upper body how much better is the whole physique going to look i can't let myself go i won't because i have nothing i have nothing except for this thing this is all i have all i have is my mind all i have is my beauty all i have is my body and right now everything else of mine is disrespected youtube is trying to pretend like i'm not worth a while to get taken up my content uh, people are trying to act like i'm not worth a while to listen to people are trying to pretend men are trying to act like i'm not worthy of pursuit as a woman uh women are trying to act like frankly i had this coming and i'm fussy and for me it's like as in i might not have your support i might not have your respect but what i've got is my own determination i've got my own body i've got my face i've got my own very beautiful hair and i've got my own like style and what i am going to do of doing things i've got my own method of doing things and what i'm going to do is train my body until people cannot deny that i'm good at what i do because i've toned so well and i've lost so much weight what i'm going to do is grow my hair until it's chilling by my waist so that everybody that's trying to pretend like i'm wasting time cannot speak such a blasphemy as that against the god of the universe and actually get away with it let there be evidence for what i speak on the rooftops so that people cannot come and accuse me of that which is false things like wasting time let me tone my upper body and my lower body so that no one in the fitness industry can ever underestimate me and let me keep my skin looking so beautiful with barely any money or no budget that anybody at all that thinks I cannot even do skincare content and give women advice as to how to stay young in your 40s. How to look like you're in your 20s in your 40s. People who are going to claim that I can't do that and so therefore run a successful YouTube channel unto that end is naive. Because I will have prospered with no money, nothing to write home about, nowhere to go, no respect and nobody regarding me as anything worth a while to look at. I will have grown hair up to my waist. I will have kept my skin looking like that of a 25 year old i will have kept my body looking like that of a 25 year old and i will have done that in conditions that are setting me up for failure living in a shack that is so hot that i am like a baker constantly in the climate of a, of a hot oven and so my pores ought be yawning i should be sinking i should be sagging i should be aging but i'm not I've got so much stress around me, have no job, no money, nowhere to go, nowhere to look, that frankly I should be popping gray hairs by now. And yet look at how jet black my hair is. I should be fat and sedentary and feeling sorry for myself and yet look at how toned my physique is. Look at how slender I am. And any man or woman walking out here in these streets that would ever encounter me at the mall or encounter me at the bank or encounter me on the street would never ever imagine that I am a 39 year old woman going on 40. That's what I am gunning for. And I'm gonna work on it and I'm gonna keep uploading my content. I'm going to upload my content on my fitness page. I'm going to upload the shorts that are not getting viewed on my fitness page. I am going to upload my long form content on my ministry and be ignored. Nonetheless, it be clear that this is a travesty. I am going to push and push and push. I will speak with the wisdom that God gives me so as to evidence to people that I'm not some dumb woman that has had all of this unemployment and sorrow coming. I am going to push Wankudra push like no man's business until it becomes clear that I am unjustly treated and that anybody that is still trying to act as if though I ain't got nothing to write home about they're naive they're naive I am viable and I'm glad to the Lord that he's kept me looking healthy I love my hair I love my hair like no man's business i am besotted with my hair i am beside myself with love for my hair and every time when i look at my bad skin i am comforted by how beautiful my hair is and after my skin clears every time i look at my slow muscle development i will be comforted by how much my skin has cleared when i thought i could never get rid of all of that acne and once i'm on tretinoin i will also be comforted by the fact that look at my gloss skin i look better than i did when i was 25. i'm not letting myself go and even though people have let me go i'm not letting me go
because I belong to Jesus and I will demolish arguments and every lofty pretension that tries to exalt itself above the Most High and hold into captivity every thought to the obedience of Jesus Christ. I will hold on to the King of the Universe and this King of the Universe will keep me comforted and letting me know that I know the plans that I have for you plans to prosper you and not to harm you to give you a hope and a future yes we're in the end of days but i did let you guys know that before we go home in the rapture from what god told me i'm gonna get my apartment so i don't know how much longer we're gonna be here for but in order for me to get to a point where my hair is waist length for in order for me to get to a point where i'm so toned that i'm basically training now instead of in a, what, what is this in and of myself being a trainee if i get there we're looking at what two years three four maybe and if we're still gonna be here with me starting my 40s out i gotta take care of myself i cannot let myself go and i also gotta fast again because some demons only come out with fasting and praying and i cannot allow all of this demonic attack to thrive without me doing something about it also looking at the world global events i recognize that yes we are in the end of days but i also recognize that we're not that at the end because much not much much is a very strong word but there is bible prophecy that has not yet been fulfilled that frankly i feel has to be fulfilled before the rapture can happen or at least we have to be at a place where it can be feasibly foreseen how the rapture can happen any minute now and for me the psalm 83 war or is it psalm 81 it is gog and magog damascus being turned into a ruinous heap things still need to happen so yes, it's true. Some speculated could happen at the beginning of the tribulation or shortly after the rapture has happened. But I imagine that some of those things have to happen and then the rapture. Like with Damascus being turned into a ruinous heap, I feel as if though that's gotta happen before the rapture. So because these things haven't happened, I know we're at the end because they're starting to happen. Recently, Israel threatened to lay La Lebanon waste. Gaza, it, was, it has been prophesied in God's word to be converted into a wasteland like be uninhabited like because it's 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 it's, it's a, what is this historical philistia it's one day going to be just desolate it's there gaza has been prophesied to one day end up desolate do you understand with nobody living there we are there but you see it's happening the fact that it's happening is evidencing that bible prophecy is is unfolding much faster than we ever faster than we ever anticipated but there are certain things that haven't happened so we should leave leg room in our hearts as christians for another five years like minimum because how long did it take last year we were saying the rapture is happening but this year it looks like bible prophecy that predicted that gaza is going to be desolate is happening now after this ground invasion by israel who knows where this is going to go who knows how multi-front this war is going to be and who knows what israel is going to have to do in order to basically win against hamas it might have to lay gaza waste and that that is going to require us to sit back and wait to watch those things happening we still need to wait for damascus to be turned into a ruinous heap we still need to wait for vladimir putin to not be so on the fence with israel because right now he is duplicitous he's obviously standing with iran but he also has not 100 percent dished israel so he's in no position to be gog but he is being cajoled and maneuvered and you know m yeah massaged into that space into that space so since he has not yet 100% turned his back against Israel, not yet, it hasn't happened, not fully. Otherwise those, uh, um, is, it, uh, is it Hezbollah? And also those Shia militias in uh, Lebanon and Syria, they would have already just ransacked. But it is because of the staying hand of Vladimir Putin or Russia that they have not gone in full force yet. So there is still some towards um israel on top of that america has not yet been laid so waste that it cannot be there for israel so yes we're at the end and it's great to encourage ourselves by saying the rapture could happen any minute now but we have to be realistic upon looking at bible prophecy and from what the lord is showing me i, I like i am better off looking forward to a future even though it's not a very long future than the rapture happened then to the rapture happening just tomorrow just tomorrow Yesterday, I was watching a video on YouTube, uh, the channel of which is, okay, some rabbi in South Africa. I forgot the name, Rabbi Goldstein or something, Warren Goldstein. Yeah, uh, he delivered a speech after Cyril Ramaphosa made those heinous claims on the rooftops about standing with Palestine and ANC, blah, blah, standing with Palestine or Hamas, essentially. And the term, the turn out was so lofty. There were so many people there basically standing in solidarity with israel in a country whose 
the head of state has stood with the enemy and it made me wake up for the first time even though my tears are heavy with south african ridiculousness to understand that yeah Gawa it's bad but there are 7,000 others that have not knelt to bail there was a strong turnout or the whole rainbow nation was there black people indian people white people so many people went to stand in solidarity with israel saying we are not the anc we are not our government we are individual south africans that recognize the terrors done against israel by hamas for what they are and we do not stand with palestine we are independent in our mindsets uh tom hughes upon commenting on the war in israel i was reading one of the Mm, what is this the comments i was reading one of the sections of the comments of some of the videos of his that i watched and there were so many south africans being like i stand with israel from south africa and i just i was creasing my forehead on some really and here it is that i'm thinking that i'm the only one and just this afternoon when i was coming back from the house um to uh, after washing my face i heard that fleury and is it who is it um Kimang, you 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 Kimang, um, I forgot man. Uh it's a secular song but it, it can be converted into a gospel song any minute now. It goes you are not alone. Um I am here the whole time singing you a song. Ooh, I will um carry you. Ooh, I will carry you is anybody out there? Mm. I oh I heard that song just going on a loop. God telling me you're not alone. You're not the only one that's got these sentiments. You're not the only one that feels this way, Garabo. And you're not the only one that is disillusioned by the state of your country, by how ridiculous things are right now. Everything that's falling apart. You are not alone. I am here the whole time singing you a song. Ooh. So upon realizing that things are not so far gone, that my country would be that uninhabitable, that I would never ever get embraced, that the, the sentiments I have, I will ever get people sitting on the corners, creasing their foreheads. And some oh, what is this one saying? what nonsense is this one speaking yeah that's been my general suspicion my belief that south africans will all just they're so far gone and so lukewarm that they would all just look at me on some ring in that every last one of them would be standing with palestine and hamas instead of and so therefore really like death to south africa like just bury yourself in the ground and hibernate and never come back up for air again because we are sanya yeah i've been feeling that way but then the lord has been telling me there are seven thousand others that have not knelt to bail there are 7,000 others that have not knelt to bail. That video got 257,000 views or something. And I was like, wow, okay, cool. I guess I am not alone. I am here the whole time. But you see, those, those, that, that was a rabbi. I wonder what Christians are saying in South Africa. The church, the, 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 yeah, the body of Christ. Anyway, whatever. But I was comforted to see all of those colors of people having pitched at that speech, at that meeting, to hear Rabbi goldstein rapping on about how it is that the anc is not south africa and it comforted me to see all those many people coming in solidarity with israel we have not all lost our minds it appears we have not all gone bonkers it appears and so i guess there's hope yeah i just don't know why i haven't found these people where they're at i'm in this country and yet they seem so few and far between it appears they're so detached everybody it just looks like they're so uninterested in what's happening tomorrow in the kingdom of heaven but you know i don't know that's just the thing about abuse but i am looking forward to a, a couple of extra years guys as hard as my life is and as much as i might hate it today the lord has essentially guaranteed me and my prophetic gifting is quite poignant guys things come to pass that i see I am not the final authority and indeed be precisely because I'm not the final authority the scriptures also are telling me it's not yet raptured time even though we're really close we're getting really close I, I feel like maybe a couple of years not I don't even think a decade but a couple of years definitely still before then meaning that we have to give ourselves strength until then so I gotta grow my hair I gotta get fit I gotta make money I gotta get an apartment I gotta move out I gotta I gotta strive for what it is that I have been shown I'm going to get. I gotta go and grab my dreams because God showed me they're gonna be given me. And when they get given me, it will be clear on that day that people tried, tried to bury me alive. Why? Because they ruined their own lives. Because you have not loved your own God. Because you have walked away from your Messiah. Because you have not stuck to the truth and have rather taken pleasure in your unrighteousness. God sent you a strong delusion. The Lord made you believe the lie. And now you're trying to get everybody else in this country that is still sober, that has not lost their minds, that has not lost their, that, that has not gone bonkers. You're trying to get them 
to do exactly what you've done. This nation is drowning because of ancestral worship. It is drowning because of witchcraft. It is drowning because of uh, all these unsavory spiritual practices. It is drowning because of sabotage of corruption. It is drowning because of uh, turning a blind eye to wickedness. But there are people, 7,000 others that have not knelt to bail, that are holding forth and making the right speeches that have got the same cry, that have got a hard cry with passion in it to speak out against wickedness, saying that not everybody has knelt to bail. And that's all that matters to me. Watching Rabbi Goldstein address so many South Africans of all different like uh, races on the matter in Israel and them in solidarity being in agreement, allowing themselves to get burnt in the blazing African sun just to listen to the speech told me, it told me all is not lost. All is not lost. And so whatever camp I've been looking at that's full of a band of miscreants is quickly getting outnumbered. And they're about to get like blown away by a tsunami. Absent of repenting the individuals they're in, they will get taken away when the Lord does bring justice to all of us ultimately. And that justice will come before the rapture. I am going to get some kind of a semblance of a normal life. And evidence of that is that the fact that God has preserved me. He has preserved me. So let's praise him for that. Let's do that. The fact that he's given me hope, even in a state of panic, he's given me hope. Yesterday I was crying about hope that is deferred, making my heart sick, lamenting about getting a rapture dream, but me, but waking up to realize it was just a dream and saying in my heart, but how many people have dreamt about the rapture and the rapture is still not here. And some of these dreams are years old. I can't just lean on that. And that's always been my mindset. I've always been nervous, scared to hold on to nothing but the prospect of the rapture because it's dangerous. Given especially uh, the Berean and studious nature that I have, I could not reconcile the rapture happening tomorrow with some of the prophecies that have not been fulfilled. While the rapture is an imminent event, I don't believe that the Lord is going to allow for there to be such a thick, long, outstretched season between the rapture and the tribulation commencing that people would have time to basically forget about that event that happened that took people up in the sky i don't think it's gonna there's gonna be definitely a season between the rapture and the tribulation starting but it can't be too long it cannot be too long otherwise it's gonna lose its power its effect its ability to reach to evangelize it's going to lose its power so there's got to be a lot more groundwork finished done essentially before then guys but I don't think it's that much longer. I don't think it's that much longer. I don't, I, I don't think we still have another 10 years yet. That's what I'm getting at. I don't even think we're going to get to that agenda year 2030. Yeah, the UN, blah, blah. Uh, yeah, I don't think we're even going to get there. But I also don't think it's tomorrow. I don't think it's next year either. It, it might be year after or the year after that. But it's not tomorrow. I don't think it's tomorrow. It can't be. We first, like Damascus needs to be turned into a ruinous heap. Another prophecy that needs to be fulfilled is Elam. Uh, uh, is it, what is this Israel breaking the bow of Elam that would be Iran basically essentially just kind of neutralizing that Iranian nuclear reactor in the heart of Elam that's still gonna happen is it all gonna happen just after the rapture is Israel going to bomb the nuclear reactor after the rapture is is it going to bomb Damascus laying it waste as a ruinous heap after the rapture is Gaza gonna be made desolate or Philistia after the rapture guys there's like maybe because the rapture could cause so much chaos that all these things happen all at the same time i believe which of course is not the final authority these beliefs of mine that what's rather going to happen is that a lot of these things are going to come to pass before the rapture culminating i believe in the war of gog and magog after the rapture shortly after the rapture because in order for israel to end up a, a land of unwalled villages it, 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 it would require a peace treaty but before a peace treaty would, it, before there would be a necessity to embark on such a peace treaty as this, there would have to be so much chaos that it would cause Islam to calm down and agree to have a truce with Israel, the Islamic nations around. There would have to be something alarming, striking, shocking, scary, and too much war, too much desolation, too much hecticness that eventually all of these parties are being war, being war exhausted, just fatigue from calamity. They will finally agree to put their tails between their legs and make peace with Israel. And so that will raise up the Antichrist. And I believe that the thing that's going to cause war fatigue is also the rapture because it's gonna be such a scary, freaky event that's gonna also inspire lots of people across the world to go crazy, to lose their minds, to become purgers, 
they will loot they will fight countries will suddenly drop bombs where bombs were never dropped the fear inspired in people's bones by this anomalous ac activity that has happened might cause extra war to happen and then the fatigue will set in causing the antichrist then to make a peace deal between in the middle east so i do believe the rapture is a catalyst of already brewing tensions but there's gotta be an already tense atmosphere even before it happens such that the rapture would cause it to ramp up and get worse and then people will get fatigued with how calamitized the ecosystem will be then there will be a peace deal then that peace deal will last for all of five seconds before there is a salivating thirst and hunger for the land of israel by the surrounding nations then gog and magog will happen there's got to be tension enough to throw such hectic bombs all over the show and those tensions have commenced but i believe they've got oh come on come on ish this phone man can i really struggle that much following which there will be a need then for the peace treaty to be fostered by this antichrist guy that's what i'm saying okay anyway whatever look i'm done now i just wanted to let you guys know that uh, um it's dangerous for me to wait on the rapture and just that waiting for that to happen and it is also unacceptable for me to therefore let myself go given that i feel as if there's still so much future left i apologize for the speech lag all of this pausing and whatnot but i'm already at the end of this video anyway i'm signing out so now that you've heard what it is that i said i hope you've been edified i hope you're encouraged to walk away from darkness i hope you're inspired to do a better thing i hope you are avoidant of hellfire and if at all you're involved in darkness my prayer is that you will stop because it, it bears no fruit it yields no fruit and your victims only end up like Arabo, ever more determined to fix what nonsense it is that you broke apart it's not worth it to partake in the fruitless deeds of darkness when there are others walking these streets like Arabo who are ever exposing them this whole thing brought me to a near-death experience but all that that near-death experience did was make me want to live even more so really stop with the witchcraft stop with nonsense stop with evil stop thinking rubbish and stop thinking god doesn't exist stop trying to extract christianity from the face of the earth stop trying to prosper to do an, an evil thing when there is still the common grace of god in operation and the restrainer is still here because on that day you're going to end up embarrassed you're going to be humiliated you're going to be humbled for you try to exalt yourself rather just do a better thing and go back home as the prodigal son and allow the lord <laughs> Remove the wax from out of your ears that you might hear and put salve on your open wounds that you might get healed from the devil worship that you were engaged in and allow him to also peel the calluses off your eyes that you might see. Otherwise, you are going to be humiliated violently by the recompense of your victim and of course, that being your comeuppance. The day in court is never appreciated by the person who is guilty. So rather just avoid it. Now that I'm going back to exercise, my hair is going to get all nappy. My hair is going to get all frizzy. So you're not going to be seeing it tomorrow or the day after but i enjoyed rocking my natural hair for a season we're going back to wigs after this signing out in christ's name crank k peace bye